Meanwhile, a small island off the coast of Denmark is a living experiment in sustainability. Samso Island is not a top European tourist destination, but politicians and environmentalists are flocking to this farming community. They want to see how this island of 4,000 people has become CO2 negative, actually producing more energy than it uses. And it does so with no oil wells or coal mines in sight. Clean Sky's Lee Patrick Sullivan traveled to Samso in the winter to see the island's simple approach to reversing its carbon footprint. After a two-hour ferry ride, entering Samso Island looks like stepping back in time. But this Danish island farming community is on the cutting edge of energy sustainability. In 1997, the Danish government held a contest to find an area that could be carbon neutral in 10 years. Samso won. In 1998, the Samso Energy Academy was set up and the entire island, 20 miles long and 6 miles wide, became one big experiment in renewable energy. And now, a little more than 10 years later, how are the people of Samso doing? If you measure everything that goes out of the island and comes in of the island, we actually now are uh, CO2 negative, you can say. We're sending more clean energy to the mainland than we import. The bulk of that extra energy comes from the wind turbines dotting Samso's countryside and the offshore ones that stand guard like kinetic soldiers. Samso also saves energy on heating. It's done in this unassuming red building. It's one of four central heating stations on the island. It's fueled by something Samso has a lot of, straw. Actually, I remember when I was a child, I could see all these fields of burning straw. But, but now we're just taking it in here and burning it to, to, to get the energy. Here's how it works. The straw is stored in this building. It's put on a conveyor belt where it is cut up and then piped into the furnace room. Here, the straw is blown into this blast furnace, heating up water before sending it through these pipes to local homes and businesses. This heating station uses solar power to preheat the water. Once the water is cooled, it is then sent back to the central station, reheated, and the system repeats. Pretty simple. Even the rodent extraction mechanism isn't high tech. It boils down to it, you're burning straw and boiling water, aren't you? Exactly. It's, it's not really rocket science, uh, and I think it shouldn't be. How the Samso Energy Academy got this island of conservative farmers to embrace renewable energy is the key. Like many small towns, Samso was losing its youth to larger cities and its economy was suffering. So the Samso plan makes the farmers partners in this experiment. The heating plant is now another source of income for excess straw that would have normally just been burned in the fields. And the straw's ashes are returned to the farms, adding nutrients to the soil. And those wind turbines? No problem getting approval from the neighbors because they are owned by the people of Samso, at least partially. Shares in the turbines were sold to residents like Inga Larson, real estate agent by day, energy entrepreneur by night. She says without the profit motive, the community would never have signed on. If, if, the, if it hasn't been, been a good buy, we wouldn't have done it. It, it would just have been an, another bunch of hippies, <laughs> I'm sure. The folks at the Energy Academy know that they're a small island, but say if countries think of neighborhoods instead of cities, it can be replicated. It, it, seems, uh, it seems unrealistic when you are Cairo or New York or something like that to do this, but then you just have to define your area. Say, we, now this area, we want to do this 100%, and maybe the next areas will follow. The island has become a rock star in the environmental world, proving that sustainable living can be achieved. But calling the people of Samso tree huggers would be a little bit off base. They've been stressing climate for the, for the last few years, and, and we never thought about climate to begin with. It's not important to us. That's not what we're talking about. It's uh, being independent because we use sustainable energy. It's, it's only a matter of defining your project and then do it not, not to save the world, but to save that area. I mean, that's very a, a key thing to this. We did this to save Samso, not to save the world. There are still challenges for Samso's energy independence. With no storage capability, when the wind doesn't blow, the island uses coal energy from the mainland. And then there are the cars and tractors and the diesel ferry that is the lifeblood of this island. So saying goodbye to fossils altogether may take some time. Transport is, is definitely the next step and it's, it's, it's a very big step and we can't do it on our, on our own.
Now that will be the next challenge in Samsung's quest for energy independence, and they may already have a head start. Some local farmers have been putting rapeseed oil into their tractors and automobiles. It may not be the solution, but it just goes to show that this one-time sleepy farming island now has sustainability on its mind. In Samsung, Denmark, Lee Patrick Sullivan, Clean Skies News.